<laughs> Greetings, cyber dogs and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from an unknown cave system in this Let's Play Minecraft survival series. In the previous episode, we were on the hunt for some sweet ass loot and we came across a mob that we had never been seen before. We were attacked by a bunch of freaking rats that popped out of a stone block. And guys, in this episode, we're going to continue on this looting mission, finish off our story that we started in the previous episode and get our buttholes back to the mole hole. So sit back and relax with your tasty ass beverage and crunchy ass snacks. Let's play some Minecraft survival. Now guys, at the end of the last episode, I was attacked by what I can only dis describe as a bunch of freaking hedgehogs or rat hogs or rat hedgehogs. Basically some really freaking weird ass mobs that I've never seen in Minecraft before and you guys told me in the comment section of the previous video that those mobs are in fact called silverfish and they are found in strongholds and in, in, in extreme hill biomes. And uh, when I read that they are found in strongholds, I literally jazzed all over myself. I was like, oh my goodness, have we found a stronghold right here on this adventure? And uh, I've spent the last 15 minutes or so digging this place up, down, left, right and center, trying to find if there is a freaking stronghold around here. And unfortunately, there is no stronghold to be found. You can see I've gone up, I've gone down. I've gone left, I've gone right, but there is no freaking stronghold guys and if I press F3 we can see that we are in fact in an extreme hills biome and that, that is the biome in which these little rats spawn and these little rats are actually called silverfish and you can hear them squeaking every now and then and um, I've isolated some of the blocks that these silverfish are in and you know that a silverfish is in a block um, because it takes a little bit longer to break the block. Uh, so check it out, right? To break, to break this bit of stone, check how fast it takes. But if I try and break this bit of stone, look, it takes a little bit longer, right? And the same applies to this cobblestone over here. Check how fast I broke that cobblestone with terror. But if I try break this one, it takes a little bit longer. And uh, these silverfish live inside of these blocks. And if you break those blocks, they attack you. And if you attack them back, the other silverfish that are perhaps sitting in blocks around the ones that you are attacking will attack you too. And they can actually swarm your ass. And, uh, and you can die quite easily. So you've got to be quite careful with these little bad boys. Um, apparently the way to kill these things is with fire. And uh, we've got some fire right here in the form of Fang, man. So I want to unleash a few of these things, see if I can actually kill them. And uh, <laughs> once that's done, guys, um, we will continue just looting the area around here. While I was looking for that stronghold, I managed to find uh, some sweet ass loot. So we're going to pick that up and I'm going to finish off my story about the raft uh, that I was constructing with my friends and that I was telling you guys about in the previous episode. So let's get going, guys. Let's see if we can actually kill these silverfish. I think I'm going to break this block over here. Um, oh, and by the way, like... If you don't kill them, they can jump back into a block, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but this time around, we're going to kill these little bastards. All right, come at me, you little freaking bastards. Oh, look how cute. They are actually really cute. Look at them. Oh, isn't that cute? Stop, bastards! <laughs> awesome. So Fang actually, actually annihilates these little things. Uh, they don't stand much of a chance versus Fang. But I don't, I don't think I'm going to kill any more of them. Maybe I'll kill one more batch because it's really fun. Come at me! Come at me, bros! Say hello to my little friend! Bam! Kaplow! Sweet. And they don't actually give you that many uh, level balls, so it's not really worth murdering them. If I, I'm not sure if a, a silk touch pickaxe would be able to pick up these blocks. Um, but if they, if they, if it can, maybe we can make a spawner or something. I think I saw Etho make a spawner with these things once. So I'm, a, I'm not going to break these ones. I'm going to note down the location of them though. Let me just take down these coordinates. X two four eight eight Y eleven Z seven five three F zero LC seventy nine Extreme Hills biome. Okay, sweet. So if we ever get a, a Silk Touch pickaxe, then maybe we can come and pick these guys up. But I'm not sure if that actually works. But anyway, guys, uh, unfortunately, there is no stronghold around here. Um, that kind of sucks. I was really, really excited about maybe finding a stronghold. Uh, but we did find some diamonds, as you can see. Bling, bling, ka-ching, in my belly. Mm. Uh, so, so far, we, we have eight diamonds, so that's pretty sweet. And we should be able to double up on that amount, I think. Claw doing work, baby. Let's have a look. 17, man. We more than doubled up. Uh, Claw is actually working pretty hard for us today. Normally, he's a bit of a butthole, but... um. 
That's awesome. Picked up a few more diamonds. I think there are uh, there's an emerald around here also that I found. And of course, we're in an extreme hills biome, right? So there, there should be a few emeralds around here. And there is the emerald that I spotted. Get in my belly, emerald! Uh, let's get rid of this freaking cobblestone up in here. Collect some of this iron. Um, but man, this has been an, a really lucrative adventure. This has been a... Like, I mean, look how much jazz we're going back with. Almost almost a full stack of lapis, which is so sweet. Uh, well, actually, no. It's about 30 lapis, I guess. Blocks of lapis so far. But we have a ton of gold, a ton of iron. Pretty freaking sweet. And you can see there's a little bit more loot around here. In fact, this cave system opens up into a giant ass ravine over here. Check it out, man. Oh, there is still so much exploring to be done around here. It's pretty frightening. Um, I think this Extreme Hills biome is exactly that, man. It is freaking extreme. But you never know, man. There could be a stronghold around here. But I, th I think it's just a giant ash ravine. And uh, we actually have no more space in our inventory for any more serious looting. I just want to see if I can pick up a little bit more gold, a little bit more lapis, uh, if possible. We don't, we definitely don't have enough lapis right now. I don't, I don't, like, we still have to finish off two canals in the Cyberdog Monument. And I don't think this is enough lapis to finish off two canals. So hopefully we can find a little bit more lapis around here before we head back to the molehole. Batty! What is cracking, girl? Good to see your cute little butt. Where in the freak have you been? <laughs> oh man, check, she just teleported. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, during the last episode, I was telling you guys a sweet story about a raft that I uh, built at school with a few of my friends. And uh, let's just, ooh, there's some gold, sweet. Let's just recap the story for those of you guys who may maybe have really short memories or um, who have risked your buttholes by not watching the previous episode. Uh, but, but when I was at school in my first year, um, I was inspired in a science lesson to build a raft with a few of my friends. And we wanted to make a raft that would be able to carry us across a small lake that was uh, behind my school. And uh, we got inspired by a science lesson because we were learning about buoyancy. And uh, we spent a few weeks designing a raft that we thought would be able to carry us across the lake. And at the end of the story in the last episode, we had gathered all of the materials that we required to build this raft. We had uh, gathered a whole bunch of oil cans, a whole bunch of Coke and Pepsi bottles, uh, and we had made rope out of our, t our school towels by cutting them up and tying them together to make rope. And we had gathered all of this material in a mini fort that overlooked the small lake that we wanted to float across. And uh, I think that's where we left off the story. At the end of the last episode um, so our goal oh man I'm getting so much gold now this is awesome uh, extreme hills biomes are epic for gold it seems um, but yeah at the end of the last episode in the story we were ready to craft our yacht uh, our yacht <laughs> yeah basically our yacht and uh, the, the the general design of this boat was going to be um, oil barrels that were uh, that had additional buoyancy reinforcement with bottles of Pepsi and Coke tied to them. Um, man, I'm trying to figure out how I got here. Uh, with the, uh, with, the, with the, the deck of the boat being the lid of a giant ass crate, basically. And what we were going to do is tie the lid of the crate to the tops of the, the cans and secure all of the cans together to make uh, the bottom of the boat and to make like a, a sort of floating platform and then the three of us were going to sit on this raft and float across the the, the small lake uh, behind our school now the problem was as i mentioned and there is some diamonds um, as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, the problem was that one of my friends was a rather large fellow. Uh, let's just say he enjoyed his pies. <laughs> and uh, we needed to make sure that our, that our boat would be able to hold his weight as well as myself and my other friend's weight. So we had to try and make that bad boy as buoyant as we possibly could. There is another emerald. So we... So we worked really, really hard uh, on collecting all of those bottles and all of those barrels. And the day came that we were going to actually craft our yacht. And man, it was such an exciting day. Um, I can still remember it so clearly like it was yesterday. It was a Sunday. And uh, on Sundays at my school, Sundays were, Sunday was the day where you could do whatever you wanted, right? As long as you stayed within the boundaries of the school, you could go and like chill on the fields. You could go hang out with friends. You could go exploring in the forests. You could 
go to the swimming pool and like tan and swim if you wanted. You could pretty much do whatever you wanted. In fact, the rule was called out of bounds and that meant you weren't allowed to be in your room or in the school buildings or in your hostel or anything like that. You literally had to get your butthole out of bounds. And uh, I used to take every opportunity that I could to go to the wild, to go to the forests and the rivers uh, and, to, and to play around. And, and um, like I mentioned in the previous episode, we had built a little miniature fort near this small lake. And um, the previous Sunday, we, like on the weekend that we had decided to build this sweet ass raft, on that Sunday, we collected all of the materials that we needed from the junkyard behind the teacher's car park at my school. And uh, once we had collected all of those materials, uh, we, we basically spent the Sunday before transporting all of those bits to the small, uh, the small fort that we had set up uh, just above the, the small lake. And man, there is some more, more gold over there. It's awesome. Um, and the, ne the following Sunday, we were ready to start crafting. We'd cut up our towels. We'd made our ropes. We had gotten our tin cans from the junkyard. Everything was ready. And uh, out of bounds, couldn't start fast enough. At my school, we had to go to church every single Sunday at, I think it was like 8 a.m. And then we could go to breakfast. And then, uh, then you could pretty much do what you wanted after you'd come back from breakfast. So we went to bed. Oh, Creeper, you bottle. What are you up to there, bro? <laughs> um... So we went to breakfast. We couldn't eat fast enough. Man, we just hogged that breakfast down like nobody's business. We needed to get our buttholes to the small fort so that we could make our raft. And uh, we got on our gear, um, our, our like out of bounds gear, which was just like shorts and a white t-shirt. And we were ready, man. We had everything that we needed at the small fort. And we, we got there early in the morning when we spent the entire day there trying to figure out how in the jazz uh, to make this yacht um, or this boat. I keep calling it a yacht, man. I think in my child mind it was a yacht, you know, it was like the sweet ass yacht, but it didn't have a sail or anything like that, unfortunately. I'm going to, I'm going to turn all of this lapis into, into blocks of lapis now, I think. We've got enough lapis to do that, I think. Oh yeah, baby! How many bits of lapis are we going to get out of this? Not enough. Yeah, definitely not enough. Oh man, only 28 blocks of lapis. That's depressing. <laughs> um, so we headed off to the small fort above the lake and we had all of the stuff that we needed. We had scissors, we had like uh, like rulers to do to do measuring, we had all of the bottles, we had everything there. And we bet the, the weekend before we piled up all of the materials in the small fort and covered it with bramblewood branches and leaves and, and trying to hide it, you know, we didn't want anyone to steal it. Not that anyone would steal it, but um, in our minds, there, there might be another group of guys who wanted to make a fort. So we covered up everything, we hid everything nicely, and we were ready. We got to the fort, and we got crafting. We had our blueprints. We knew exactly what we wanted to do and how we were going to do it. And uh, we spent the entire day crafting that sweet-ass raft, man. Basically, what we did was we surrounded the barrels with bottles. So we try to make each barrel as buoyant as possible. And by doing that, we added like rope joints to the to the cans themselves. If you can imagine, we were using the towels to secure the bottles to the the barrels, and that meant there was there was place there, like there were places to tie the the crate to the actual barrels. So we like um. We, there were there was there were holes in the top of the crate that we we fed the rope through and then tied them through the joints um, of the oil cans and we managed to secure the this this crate lid to the top of these oil barrels and this that bad boy was ready for action man it was ready to sail away into the into the freaking uh, sunset and to carry our fat nerdy buttholes across that lake um, but of course before we ourselves got onto that thing we needed to test it out so we we took it down to the lake which was about ten meters from the small fort and put it into the water and lo and behold that bad boy floated absolutely perfectly it floated beautifully man it was awesome i remember it being like like tilting slightly to the left it wasn't it wasn't entirely centered and i remember us being slightly concerned about that but nah whatever it couldn't have been perfect man it's not like we had uh, machines to engineer a perfect freaking boat if you know what i mean <laughs> um it floated well enough and we wanted to do one final test so what we did was we pushed that uh that raft into the middle of the lake and the idea was to push it across the lake and hopefully it would float all the way to the other side of the lake and then we'd go pick it up again on the other side and we gave that raft an almighty shove and that raft floated out into the middle of the lake gloriously man it was beautiful um 
it even ha it was even like aerodynamic through the water because of the shape of the cans and it just it just headed so beautifully to the to the opposite side of the the small lake and we ran all the way around the circumference of the lake laughing our heads off in, in joy and happiness that our, our piece of engineering had actually worked and we watched our raft float all the way to the other side of the lake and then we went and picked it up and took it back to the small fort by that stage the sun was going down and we needed to get back to our dormitories for, for roll call because we'd been missing all day. And, uh, no, no, no! Under siege! No, you bastard! Oh, man! Jeez! Man, that was intense! Ooh, two and a half life, man. That's not good. <laughs> Um, so anyway guys, we headed back to uh, to our dormitory. The sun was going down, we needed to get back before like prefects got angry with us and, and they sent out a search party or something. And for the next week, all we could think about was that raft. We'd left the raft in the mini fort and covered it with leaves and hidden it. We definitely didn't want anyone stealing it or finding it or anything. So we covered up, we covered it up completely with everything that we could find. And uh, every single, I remember going to sleep every single night that week, just thinking about that raft and thinking about getting my nerdy butt on that raft and floating across the lake and how freaking so sweet it was going to be, man. And uh, the next Sunday could not come quick enough. Um, the weekend came. It was a beautiful day. The sun was out. It was warm. It was a perfect day for sailing, man. And uh, we, had to, we went to church. We had breakfast. And we got our butts out of there as fast as we could, man. Straight down to the small fort that was situated uh, above the small lake. And there was our raft waiting for us, man. Underneath all of those brambles and, and plants and leaves. Our raft was still there. No one had seen it. No one had stolen it. And uh, we were ready to go on our epic odyssey across the small lake. To us, it was, it, it was akin to Columbus discovering America, man. It, it, it was serious freaking business. And uh, when we got there, um, we noticed that everything was really, really wet. And that is because during that week, it had been raining a lot. And uh, my school was basically in a, uh, a tropical area of South Africa where it rains a, a heck of a lot, right? And that week it rained a ton. Um, and when we, when we got to the, the lake itself, everything was wet. Ow! Um, incoming! The raft itself was soaked. Um, the platform, like the, the, the crate platform was completely saturated also. Everything was like super saturated, but we didn't care, man. Like, we checked the, the joints, we checked the rope joints, everything seemed to be okay. And uh, we were ready to set sail across the small lake. We picked up that beautiful bit of crafting, that raft that we had worked so hard to create. We picked it up and walked it down to uh, the bottom of the lake, to the bank. We stuck it into the water and this was it, man. It was time to push off. It was time to head into the middle of that lake, float our buttholes across and achieve something that no 11-year-old had ever achieved before. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I am 100% lost right now. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just get to the surface. Yeah, let, let's just head upwards and uh, hopefully we can breach the surface at some point. So we took the, the, we took the raft down to the lake. Guys! And we were ready to go. And now, there were three of us, right? And we were a, a combined weight, I would say, of probably 100 kilograms. Um, because one of us was pretty large. And, oh, there is another silverfish over here. That is another... There is another sil... Th there's more silverfish here, people. Check it out. What is going down over here, man? I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to explore this area. There might be a stronghold over here. Um, so, the time had come, guys. Like, the time had come to put our raft to the test. And uh, like I say, we, we had uh, trekked the, the, car, the, the, the raft down to the bank of the water uh, of the lake and we'd stuck it into the water. And I was the first one to get and I volunteered. I was like, guys, I'll be the first one to get on this lake and uh, let's see if this bad boy can hold my weight. And I, I sat on the raft, on, the, on, one, on one corner of the raft, and it held. It held beautifully. It sunk a little bit into the water, but because of the, the, the enormous amount of barrels and, and uh, bottles that I used, uh, that we used to create buoyancy, it worked absolutely beautifully, man. It held my weight like nobody's business. Then it was the, ch the, the turn of my smaller friend who was basically the same size, size as me. And I said to him, dude, get on, get on the freaking raft, man. Uh, let's see if it can hold both of us. 
<laughs> and my friend sat on the raft and even though it sunk slightly in more into the water, it held. It was holding beautifully, man. Now came the final freaking test, whether our fat nerdy friend would be able to sit on the raft without breaking it and without causing it to sink to the bottom of the freaking small lake. And we said to him, dude, this is, this is, this is your time to shine right now, man. Suck in your stomach and get your freaking rotund butthole onto this raft. And he sat on the raft and in an absolute moment of glory and joy, that raft held, that raft held its buoyancy. It did not sink. It was floating beautifully on top of that lake. Um, I will say that our butts were in the water because the platform of the, the raft had actually sunk below the waterline. But it was holding our weight. Our combined weight was being held by this freaking raft, man. And uh, where is that silverfish? It's over here. And we pushed off the side of the bank to go all the way into the center of that lake. And we were on our way. We were using our hands to pedal, to paddle ourselves across the lake. And uh, it, it looked like it was going to happen, man. We were on the way to the other side of the lake to achieving our freaking goal and to just feeling like a million bucks. And we paddled as fast as we could. And suddenly one of my friends noticed that our ship was starting to sink a little bit and we, we thought to ourselves, well, that's because the ropes um, of, the, of the actual raft are being saturated. So the, the weight of the raft is increasing. And that's the, that's the reason why. And there's nothing really to worry about. Everything will be fine. And we carried on peddling, try, uh, paddling, trying to get to the other side of the lake. But the raft carried on sinking slightly. Um, and we started to think to ourselves, okay, well, maybe we had too much breakfast this morning. Uh, that's why this raft is sinking. And slowly but surely, that raft started to sink even further. And then the worst possible thing Thing that could happen happened and one of the ropes snapped that was holding together the integrity of that raft and one of the oil barrels started to float away from the raft now separated from the structure itself and then it didn't take very long for all three of us plus our freaking sweet ass raft to end up at the bottom of the small lake and um it was one of the saddest uh one of the, the most tragic but most happy moments of my school life because for a glorious few minutes we were sailing across that freaking lake as if we owned the place man as if we were some great discoverers that had breached the laws of science and managed to create an epic epic uh, freaking raft but unfortunately um our raft just wasn't strong enough to, to hold up our weight now the the depth of the small lake wasn't very deep it was probably um no, like no deeper than, than, than ourselves, right? So like about five foot deep, I guess. And uh, we were able to actually um, hang on to the, the raft, even once it had sunk down to the bottom. If we, if we ducked under the water um, and, and, and sort of, um, and, and, sw and swam downwards towards the bottom of the lake, we were actually able to find the raft. And what we actually did was, was uh, pick up, like drag the raft across the bottom floor of the lake to get it back to uh, the small fort. And, Basically, what we wanted to do was repair that bad boy, right? And to see if we could fix it. However, we would soon discover that a fatal flaw had occurred and that um, <laughs> our raft was basically unrepairable. During the week uh, before that it had been raining so heavily at my school, one of the tins had rusted uh, totally through and a hole had basically ruptured in the tin when we'd applied all of that pressure to the buoyancy of the raft. And so while we were sailing across the lake, um, water had started to pour into this can uh, through the, the, the hole that was created from rust and by the time we had got to the middle of the lake unfortunately the rust had taken hold of the can and the can had totally filled up with water and we'd lost all buoyancy and basically sunk to the bottom of the freaking lake. <laughs> um, but man, uh, that, that is what happened man. That is the story of the raft that I built with my friends at school and it was so freaking awesome. One of my favorite Sundays or, or one of the one of the my favorite memories with my friends that I ever had at that school, and uh, I just oh man, we just had so much fun building that lake, man, and uh, or building that raft anyway. And uh, I know that I'm definitely not the only one that's built rafts. So if, if for those of you guys who have built rafts, also let me know in the comment section below, man. We'd love to hear from you. Have you like what epic floating devices have you guys built in your childhood? <laughs> Um, anyway, guys, I have explored this whole area now where we found these new silverfish, but it doesn't look like there is any stronghold over here, unfortunately. So that's a bit of a bummer. Um, like this cavern just looked so 
weird, right? Where these silverfish were, just it looked like such a weird little cavern. I, I thought to myself, man, there, there has to be a stronghold here. But it looks like um, it's just, yeah, it's just a part of this giant ash ravine that we discovered earlier. So I tell you what, man, let's unleash these silverfish and just kill them. Anyway, just for the funs of it, just for the lols. Come at me, you bastards! Oh, there was only two of them anyway. Fail! It looks like there's there's only two silverfish per block. It doesn't look like there can be more. Here's another one. Ah, you little bastards! There's more here. Nope, that's it. Oh man, awesome. Okay, sweet guys. Well, we managed to pick up a whole bunch more um, gold and and a little bit more iron. We haven't managed to pick up more lapis, unfortunately, but um, I'm, I'm pretty sure this, I, I, hopefully this will be enough lapis. If not, I'll just hit the strip mine with the vengeance. Um, let's get up to the surface now, guys. Let's see if we can actually find our way back to the mole hole uh, in one piece. Things are getting a little bit precarious around here. I, I almost died uh, in when I was telling that story. Man, it's difficult to, to think it's difficult to tell a story and not die in Minecraft at the same time. Uh, I, I definitely wouldn't recommend it to anybody. <laughs> um, let's, just, let's just have a look around here. Any lapis? No lapis, man. But there's some natural staircases, which is sweet. So hopefully this will get us up to the top. Yeah, this looks like it's taking us to the top of whatever this giant ravine is. And I think we'll probably just need like one more staircase to breach the surface. So let's get freaking digging, man. Oh man, I'm just I'm just thinking about that raft and, and how sweet it was. Oh man, it was such an awesome day. Um, I remember that um, like a few years later, or probably like probably the next holiday, I guess, of that of that year, I wanted to make a raft with Goxie, <laughs> and uh, we wanted to make a raft and stick it on um, stick it in our swimming pool. But and we asked our dad if we could do it, and he was like, "Hell no." <laughs> oh, anyway, guys, check it out, man. We've come out the side of a mountain, which is pretty sweet. Um, and it is nighttime though, which is not good. That's obviously a precarious situation. But let's get our compass in our hotbar and uh, let's have a look. Okay, so the mole hole is in this direction, or spawn is anyway. And uh, looks like we're going to be traveling at night, man. So, oh, my bad. <laughs> um, so let's do this, man. Let's freaking get on our horse and head back to the mole hole. Oh, this is actually a really good opportunity, speaking of horses, to uh, apologize to my horse that is called Napoleon. And uh, the reason I'm apologizing to Napoleon was because at the beginning of this adventure, I actually had forgotten Napoleon's name. Um, I, I, I asked, like, I think I said that we still need to name this horse, but in fact, we already had a name for the horse and that name was Napoleon, obviously. And uh, that just shows you guys what I was saying a few episodes ago that we have way too many characters in the series for now. And I think what we're going to do is we are going to put a ban on any new characters in this Minecraft series until season four. So no more new characters, no more babies, no more new horses, new dogs, new cats, no more new nothing. Um, I can barely remember all of the characters we have now. So <laughs> um, like Napoleon is going to be the last of the new. I think that's the most recent mob or the most recent character added to the series, right? Yeah, or it might be Griswold's daughter, which we haven't named yet. She might be the, the latest, but there ain't no more, man. That is it. That is freaking it. All right. Uh, let's see. Where in the jazz are we, man? It seems to be like some giant ass ocean or something over here. Or just like a lake. This lake's pretty sweet. And if I spot any flowers that we don't have in Mama Dog's greenhouse, then I'm, I'm obviously going to collect those. But I think... I'm pretty sure we've got every single flower we, you can get in Minecraft. I don't know. There might be some like really rare ones that we haven't found yet that only spawn like every second block. Like, you know, only spawn on like one block per chunk or something like that. But I don't recognize any of this area, but the sun is coming up, which is pretty sweet. Um, which means we have a, a nice long day of uh, safe travel, man. And we cannot be waylaid by enemies. Cows, give me a sticks. Bam. Shrooms, pigs, sheep. Man, this place is, this is definitely not our old 1.3 biome. What in the jazz is that? Oh, I think we've, I think we've discovered the border of the 1.7 um, uh, transition than we did. 
Yeah, that looks like the border man. It's so ugly. It's horrible. Right, let's let's make some plankage. Crafting table. We need to make a boat, basically. Because this looks like a giant ass ocean of some kind. And let's head off in this direction across the ocean. And we'll just ignore this really ugly ass wall over here. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I, like we're really close to the mole hole now, right? Like this is definitely the 1.7 um, thing that we did. Yeah, definitely. So actually, this adventure was pretty close to the mole hole, which is awesome. That means there's an extreme biome not too far away. If we, if we were actually able to map it with, um, like in the nether, we could actually get back there to that extreme hills biome. It seems like extreme hills biomes have more like loot in them. Is it just me? But I felt like there was way more gold and lapis and stuff like that on that adventure. Charge! Bam! <laughs> right, looks like we've got a desert coming up in front of us there. And we should be getting pretty close now, I think. Is this a de like is this a desert that we know? Is this a familiar desert? Let's try Oh! What is- Oh! It's Dogtown, baby! Sweet! Oh, man. So this Extreme Hills biome is actually really, really close to us. That's awesome. Check check it out, guys. It's Dogtown, man. We haven't been here in ages. Oh, epic. Okay, so we headed- We basically headed in that direction. Alright, guys. So sweet. So now it's gonna be- Oh. <laughs> now it's gonna be easy sailing for me to get back to the mole hole. So, uh, I'm gonna- I'm gonna head over there, make a minecart, get my butthole back to the mole hole, deposit all of this sweet-ass loot. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to finish off the Cyberdog Monument Canals in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching this episode, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the story of the raft. And, uh, and unfortunately we didn't find a stronghold, but I did try my best. And uh, I would love to hear about any rafts that you guys may have made in your childhoods. Hit me up in the comment section below. All right, guys, this has been Ren Diggity Diggity Dog playing Minecraft Survival. If you enjoyed the episode, you hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, you hit that subscribe button. And in the next episode, guys, I will see you back in Mole City. Cannot wait for the next episode. Goodbye, my friends!